A lot of news surrounding the New Jersey Devils the last few days. Jack Hughes is set to return to the Devils lineup real soon. And Michael McLeod has officially been charged with two counts of sexual assault. What does this mean going forward? Well, I listened to the London, Ontario Police Service press conference, and I'm going to share with you some of my takeaways from it. We have a lot to break down in today's episode of Locked on Devils. Buckle up, everybody. You're Locked on Devils, your daily podcast on the New Jersey Devils. Part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. Hi, this is Bryce Salvador, and you're Locked On Devils with Trey Matthews. Elliott scores! Oh, Steven stepped up, nailed him. Rodor has got the puck. What a shot. The Devils win the Stanley Cup. All righty now. What is up, New Jersey? Welcome back to the Locked On Devils podcast here on Locked On Network. I'm your host, College Hockey Club, a play announcer, Dells are for Pucks and Pitchforks, and also part-time credential media member, Trey Matthews. I know it's been a minute, but similar to a lot of players during All-Star Weekend, I decided to take a bit of a hiatus to recharge my batteries. And as you guys know, I was approved for credentials to cover All-Star Weekend in Toronto. Unfortunately, I had to decline the invitation due to other work obligations. I even said in a more recent episode that I hope to get back to the All-Star game next year, but the NHL dropped the bombshell and said that they're not going to do the All-Star game next year. They're going to do something a little bit more interesting, and we'll probably talk about it in a future episode, but similar to uh, episodes in the past in which I take a bit of a break, there's a lot of Devil's News I need to catch up on, so we need to talk about the injury circumstance surrounding Jack Hughes, and as promised, on February 5th, The London, Ontario police, they held a a presser to talk about the situation involving the five players from the 2018 Team Canada squad. So I will give you guys my thoughts of the matter, and then we'll talk about the ramifications that will most likely follow suit. So let's talk about Jack Hughes and the possibility of him returning maybe sometime this week. So as you guys know, Jack Hughes was selected to originally represent the New Jersey Devils in the All-Star game, unfortunately. About a month ago, he sustained an injury while playing the Chicago Blackhawks, and uh, there was a lot of rumors and speculation as to whether or not he will actually play in the All-Star game. Unfortunately, at at a last-minute decision, it was ruled that he would not suit up, but he would still be with his brother Quinn to uh, basically team up with Michael Buble, who was on drugs apparently uh, during uh, the, the draft. And that basically uh, caused a buzz around the NHL discourse. But digressing a little bit, the Hughes brothers selected their respective team uh, for the All-Star game. Honestly, I, I know they were trying to change some things up, but at the end of the day, I don't think anyone really cares about the NHL All-Star game with all due respect. And I, I don't think it's just in the NHL. I think the NBA All-Star game, I think it's also gone downhill a little bit. MLB has gotten a little more interesting the last few years, but when it comes to the All-Star game, I think a lot of players would rather be on vacation and just be with their family or just replenish, refuel, as opposed to actually suiting up in another game that's meaningless to them. But anyway, digressing a little bit. So Hughes was a part of All-Star weekend for the first few days, but during the afternoon of February 3rd, the Devils released this statement regarding Jack Hughes. They said, Jack went home to Jersey last night after participating in Thursday's draft and Friday's media hits. He was extremely honored to be a part of All-Star Weekend, especially sharing it with his brother. He's really close to returning and wanted to get back so he could continue to focus on the rest of the Devils' season. So for all those people who said that Jack doesn't care about the Devils because, like I said moments ago, there was a lot of speculation as to whether or not Jack could participate in the All-Star game festivities. It seemed like it was going to happen, but once again, he made the decision not to participate, and Jesper Bratt took his spot as a result, but uh, people were basically a little furious at Jack because they were like, why couldn't he suit up just a few days earlier to help the Devils close out, uh, I guess, the first half of the season before the All-Star break to help the Devils uh, gain some more wins because they're currently on a two-game losing streak prior to the All-Star break. But I I I even defended Jack. I said, Jack really does care about hockey, and honestly, I wouldn't mind if he did play in the All-Star game because it's just like, let him ease back into it a little bit. No one's really going to take it seriously. So I think if he's good to go and if he could get his feet wet a little bit, try to get his hockey legs back underneath them, why not? Just crawl before you walk and uh, we'll see what happens. But nonetheless, he decided to go home and the Devils had back-to-back practices recently. So they had a practice on Sunday 
and they also had a practice on Monday. So Sunday, he was not accounted for. He was not present at the practice. And basically, that raised a lot of concern for Devil's Discourse. People were saying like, oh, he's not close to returning or he's going to be out for X amount of games or something like that. I was just like, he's literally left All-Star Weekend early because during one of his media availabilities in Toronto, he said he's really close to returning. So I don't think Jack would mislead the Devils like that. So I think uh, he uh, is almost good to go. But once again, just crawl before you walk because you don't want Jack to sustain a longer-term injury and the Devil season is basically over because we'll talk about his stats and his impact momentarily. But nonetheless, I felt like people were overreacting on social media. Now, were people taking it seriously or were they joking? I don't really know. But basically, I on my end, I was not worried. I didn't think he suffered a setback at all. And uh, Monday confirmed uh, what I was speculating, which was he did return to practice. However, he was in a gray, no contact uniform. But the fact that he was back to practicing with the Devils, that's a good sign. Now, will he play in tonight's matchup against Colorado Avalanche? If I had to make an educated guess, I would say no. But depending on how the Avalanche game goes, maybe just maybe we'll see him play in Thursday's matchup against the Calgary Flames. Because if you guys recall, uh, going back to around American Thanksgiving time, remember when the Devils lost their first game of a back-to-back to the Columbus Blue Jackets and uh, they were in desperate need of a momentum shift. They were in desperate need of an energizer. So the very next game against the Buffalo Sabres, uh, they cleared Nico Heischer to return to action when Lindy Ruff, early on in the week, was giving indicators saying that Heischer was close, but he was not quite ready. So I think we'll see Jack at some point this week. I can't confirm or deny that, but based on all the signs that I'm putting together, I think we will see Jack return sooner rather than later. And that's going to be really good for the Devils because their offense has been somewhat stagnant, both five on five and power play without Jack at times. Because at this point for the Devils, since they're missing a lot of key depth assets, and I talked about it in recent episodes, I talked about it with Chico Resch as well is that the Devils have to do an unorthodox style of hockey, which is they're all offense and little to no defense with shaky goaltending. So it was just like, uh, that's not a recipe to win games. So it worked against the Vegas Golden Knights, but it didn't work against the Carolina Hurricanes because sometimes you're not guaranteed to score three or more goals. But according to Megan Cheka, who is a data scientist for Statleets, I hope I'm pronouncing her name correctly, she put out the Devils differentials when Hughes is on the ice versus when he's off the ice. So goal differential, plus 22 when he's on the ice, off the ice, minus 28. Shot differential, and quite honestly, this was the most surprising one in my opinion, plus 468 when he's on the ice, off the ice, minus 59. Scoring chance differential, plus 150 when he's on the ice, minus 104 when he's off the ice. Rush scoring chance differential, and I think that's also a critical one because as we know, the Devils like to get uh, off and running. I know sometimes they've been inconsistent with this, but they love those breakout passes. They love to just play that fast style of hockey. And Jack Hughes is the epitome of working in that sort of system because that's his game. But going back to the stats, rush scoring chance differential, plus 49 when Hughes is on the rink, off the ice, minus nine. High danger chance differential, plus 21 when Hughes is on the ice versus off the ice, minus 25. Now, I believe that's for all certain scenarios because Cheka later put out on uh, social media as well that five on five with Jack Hughes on the ice, goal differential minus four. Without Jack Hughes on the ice, zero. Shot attempts differential plus 178. Uh, without Jack on the ice, plus 191. Scoring chances differential plus 37. When he's on the ice, plus 22. When he's off the ice, Rush scoring differential, plus 31. When he's on the ice, when he's off the ice, plus six. Slot shots differential, plus 51. When he's on the ice, plus 40. When he's off the ice, high danger chances differential, plus four when he's on the ice, plus eight when he's off the ice. Now, here's the thing. I know there's this old saying in sports that numbers don't lie. But in this case, I think it's safe to say that Jack Hughes plays a vital role on this team. And I think the Devils will be thankful to have him back on the rink. So, I think their five on five is is still going to improve. I think their power play is going to improve as well because uh, Jack uh, knows how to basically uh, be a good playmaker, set up his teammates. And we've been seeing the dynamic of him and his brother work really well 
while on the man advantage. So I think Jack is going to be very critical in the Devils turning around their season. And Lindy Ruff did say that he's day to day, and I'm sure they're going to see how the rest of this week goes for a devil. So if they lose badly against the avalanche, then desperate times call for desperate measures. You might need to play them against the flames, but that's just speculation on my end. Now, before I close out uh, segment one, I do want to say one thing. I know he has kind of fallen off in the heart trophy discussions because I remember within the first few weeks of the season, we were talking about the possibility of Jack Hughes becoming MVP of the league one day, but since he, once again, has been out for an extended period of time, people have forgotten about Jack Hughes' contributions. But here's something that can also help him. Now, I'm not saying he will win the Hart Trophy, but here's how he can help his case. If he comes back and the Devils just catch lightning in a bottle and they become one of the hottest teams in the NHL and he's at the forefront of it all, then honestly, I think he will have his name brought up in MVP discussions once again. Once I can't reiterate this enough. I don't think he's going to win it. I think that's far gone, but I still think he can get his name into discussion if he is the reason why the Devils turn around their season because they're down, but they're not out, and they got to start winning more consistently. So obviously in both the Metro and the Wild Card, they're on the outside looking in, but it's not by that significant amount of points. So I still think the Devils have a chance this season. Okay. We're going to talk about uh, Michael McLeod and also Cal Foote and what's been going on with uh, the 2018 Team Canada squad momentarily. But before we continue, let me tell you guys about the Sleeper app. So regardless of where the Devils are at in the current standings, I want to remind you that you can win big by playing Daily Fantasy Hockey on Sleeper, the official Daily Fantasy app of the Locked On NHL Network. Sleeper is our number one choice for Daily Fantasy Sports, especially Daily Fantasy Hockey, because with Sleeper, you can win 100 times your cash in daily fantasy hockey contests. So you don't just have to participate in fantasy hockey. Fans can also play daily fantasy football, basketball, baseball, college football, all on the Sleeper app. All you have to do is pick whether studs like Jack Hughes, Nico Heischer, Jesper Bratt, Vitek Vancek will record more or less than their Sleeper projections for things like goals, assists, saves, plus, minus, and more in any given time. So use the promo code Locked on NHL and you'll get a $100 match on your first deposit. Terms and conditions apply. That's code locked on NHL. See sleepers terms of use for details and locational availability. Okay, so as promised, the London, Ontario Police Service held a press conference to address what's been going on with the five players involved in the 2018 Team Canada scandal. And they hosted it on February 5th, shortly after All-Star Weekend. Now, I watched the press conference, and for any of you who missed it, here are some of my main takeaways. Basically, the relationship between London, Ontario police and people who are the victim of sexual assault, it's pretty much a frayed relationship, and the police service acknowledged it, so they're going to have to try to build up the trust, once again, of people who are the victim of sexual assault. And they also allowed for the press to ask some questions regarding the 2018 Team Canada scandal. And here's the main uh, talking point that I just have to share, which is it was mostly the, the chief of police and also some officers involved saying like, they can't really go into detail. They can't really talk about this. They can't really talk about that because this case is brought before a court. So it's something that I've talked about on this show before, which is people are wondering why isn't Lindy Ruff or Tom Fitzgerald why aren't they going into greater detail or hosting a press conference to discuss the matter? I said, well, for legality purposes, they re they can't. They, they, they just can't. So, And remember, the Devils are an American-based team. And I know Michael McLeod and Cal Foote were playing in America, but this took place in Canada. So the laws out there are a little different. So I just want to give you guys that sort of perspective, which is uh, how it's handled in the U.S. versus Canada, two different things. I know... Canada and the U.S. are in the are in the same continent, but they're two different countries. And I think we all know that at this point. So the press conference basically confirmed what everyone knew at this point, which was the five players that uh, surrendered to London, Ontario police and have formally been charged are Michael McLeod, Alex Formenton, Carter Hart, Cal Foote and Dylan Dubé. But here's the interesting scenario in all of this. So Formenton, Hart, Foote and Dubé were all charged with one count of sexual assault, whereas Michael McLeod was given two counts. So if you're wondering why is that the case, well, during the press conference, they were quoted to say, the one charge he is laid with is in relation to his own actions 
the party to the offense charge is in relation to aiding someone else in the offense. So I really don't want to speculate. I don't want to say that this is a good chance. I don't even want to say that this is a less likely chance, but it is a chance that Michael McLeod is John Doe one in this whole ordeal. But let's go back a little bit. So according to the lawsuit, the woman first met the players at a bar in London, Ontario, where a player referred to as John Doe one bought her an alcoholic drink. The woman became more intoxicated and eventually went to the hotel with John Doe One. Once in John Doe One's hotel room, the two engaged in sexual acts, where after John Doe One invited the rest of the John Doe defendants into the room without the plaintiff's knowledge or consent. And that's where the alleged sexual assault began. So once again, I'm not saying it is a good chance. I'm not saying it's a less likely chance. I'm just saying there's a chance that Michael McLeod is John Doe One in this whole lawsuit because the fact that he is the only player charged with two counts and the fact that his second charge is in relation to aiding someone else in the offense i think that's a good indicator that he might be the john doe one but once again they couldn't go into great detail so i can't confirm or deny that but basically people were putting two and two together i was talking to some of my fellow colleagues over at locked on about the matter so i think we uh came to the consensus that it might be Michael McLeod, who is uh, the unnamed player in this case that gave the victim alcoholic drinks and invited her back to their respective hotel room. So that's uh, something new that we learned in this case. So once again, I didn't get too much out of the press conference, but I know more information will start to pick up once this case gains even more fire. So McLeod and Foot's lockers have been cleared out, according to Ryan Novazinski. So there's that. And TSN put out and said that the players involved in the sexual assault case will return to court on April 30th. So that's around the playoffs slash off season. So if I had to make an educated guess, I would say that the chances of Foot and McLeod returning to the Devils pretty much slim to none. But that's just speculation on my end, just given the circumstances, given what's uh, going to transpire, because I said it in a recent episode. This is going to take a while before we hear the fate of these respective players. So I don't really know uh, what, what's in store for the future, but here's what I do know. All those players, with the exception of Formentin, because I don't know what his contract was like in Switzerland, all four of those five players who were currently in the NHL, they're uh, pending restricted free agents. So whatever happens down the line, it's going to make things a little easier for the Devils to deal with those contracts. But there's other factors to the financial situation, and we're going to discuss that momentarily. But before we continue, I want to tell you guys about FanDuel. So happy Super Bowl to all those who celebrate from FanDuel, America's number one sports book. If you're like me, Super Bowl Sunday is all about the best seat on the couch, grabbing your favorite football snacks and placing some super bets. So FanDuel has so many ways uh, for you to end the season with a W or two or three. Not only can you bet on who will win Super Bowl 58, but FanDuel also has bets for which player will score a touchdown, how many points will be scored, and much more. New customers join today and you'll get a $200 in bonus bets if your first bet of $5 or more wins. Just visit FanDuel.com slash locked on to sign up. That's FanDuel.com slash locked on. Make every moment more with FanDuel, an official sports book partner of the NFL. Okay, so like I said, a lot of people are asking questions about the contract situations for both Foot and McLeod. Like, what's going to happen? Are their contracts going to get terminated by the NHL? Because I said uh, in, in a recent episode as well that Gary Bettman, the commissioner, has the right to terminate these contracts given what's been going on in, from a legal standpoint. But some news came out and it was revealed that the Flyers, Devils, and Flames have been informed that they will receive cap relief from the players on leave charged in the 2018 World Junior Criminal Proceedings. So James Nichols of New Jersey Hockey Now has said that this is $2.2 million in relief for the Devils' cap. And remember, Dougie Hamilton is on LTIR, and the Devils already had some money to work with. But if we factor in Hamilton on the IR, the Devils have $11,623,644 in cap relief. So if I had to make an educated guess, people are – wondering like what's going to happen to the devils moving forward because 
Obviously, losing Michael McLeod, that's big. But at the same time, I don't really care about hockey in this case. I care more about uh, the the sensitivity of the case and how it's going to proceed going forward. But, yeah, a lot of people are wondering what's going to happen uh, to the Devils now that they've lost these two players. Well, once again, I think they are going to try to make a move. I I think that Tomas Nosek will be a big help on the face-off department and – uh, Jack Hughes obviously is the devil's best offensive weapon. So once he returns, I think that's also going to be monumental for the devils to try to turn around their season. But the fact that the devils have about $11 million in cap space to play with, and one of their players is on the LTIR as a result of that, I think uh, Tom Fitzgerald has some wiggle room to work with to maybe make a trade because the trade deadline period is in about a month. So I know it's a very touchy subject. I'm sorry to end this episode on a bit of a down note, but just wanted to give you guys the facts and how uh, this will be handled going forward. So obviously we'll talk more about like possible trade scenarios for the Devils and how they could go about it uh, in future episodes. But just wanted to leave you guys off with some of the biggest news coming from the Devils organization, which is Jack Hughes returning to action very soon and what's been going on in Canada involving the 2018 Team Canada unit. But going back to that press conference, it wasn't really all that insightful and we'll get more information uh, within the next few weeks and months and we'll go from there. But uh, this is the same Team Canada that tried to pay a settlement to make it disappear and they did apologize to the victim because this took this case has been going on for nearly six years and it was originally closed back in 2019 but reopened in 2022 so we'll see what happens and once again i'm sorry that this was a bit of a uh bad note to close out on but i had to give you guys that information so let me know what you guys think and i will catch you in the next episode which will be a post-game recap involving the devils and the avalanche so continue to stay safe have a wonderful day in new jersey go devils i'll catch you guys in the next episode thanks for listening once again